Welcome back to our continuing coverage of Amazon's Invincible, based off the Robert Kirkman series of the same name. This is our sixth episode in the series, so feel free to check out our other videos on Omni-Man, Invincible himself, Robot, Battle Beast, and Adam Eve. And there should be a card on the screen now if you need help finding those videos. We put them all in a handy little playlist for you. But for the best understanding of these videos, it really helps to watch those videos first, because in order for me to save time, I may loosely cover things in this video that I've already covered more extensively in others. Today's video is on one of the more bizarre characters within the Invincible universe, and somebody that grows to have one of the more unique arcs in the comics in my opinion. Amanda, or Monster Girl, also happens to be one of the characters that people requested the most in the comments for our videos, so if there's somebody you want to see, feel free to drop a comment below. Being a generous YouTuber that I am, I'm here to give you exactly what you want. Now, before we begin, keep in mind that this video is not going to cover every single issue, conversation, or action that Monster Girl takes, but it will cover the vast majority of the most important elements of her story. Additionally, in order for the story to make the most sense, I may not necessarily cover every event as it occurred in the comics, but rather in a way that presents it most logically. That being said, let's cover Amanda the Monster Girl. Monster Girl's first comic appearance is in Invincible 9, where she's introduced to the readers as a candidate for the new Guardians of the Globe team. After Omni-Man killed the Guardians of the Globe, the world is left with a need for a new superhero team. Cecil Stedman, the director of the Global Defense Agency, appoints Rudolph Connors, aka Robot, as the new acting leader of the Guardians, and Robot immediately begins the process of organizing a new team. During tryouts for the new team, we are introduced to Amanda, a young girl who is fairly sassy and kind of mouthy. She immediately gets into a confrontation with another candidate and former member of the teen team, Rexplode. During the confrontation, Amanda transforms into a massive, monstrous new form. She easily gets the upper hand on Rex and pummels him pretty violently. Amanda is quickly chosen to be part of the Guardians of the Globe team, where she remains for the majority of the series. This is also the first time she meets Mark Grayson, aka Invincible. I'm only bringing that up now because I don't really discuss Mark a lot during this video, but he's there. But what of Amanda's mysterious origin? How did she get her powers? Well, we learn all of that information in the back of issue 25. We learn that Amanda was an academically gifted student who graduated early and went on a senior class trip to Europe. There she met a boy and fell in love. However, the boy's grandmother didn't approve of Amanda, and after witnessing the two of them making love, ew grandma, not again, she placed a classic old lady monster curse on Amanda. This curse caused Amanda to transform into a male monster. I know, weird, right? At first, Amanda could not control the transformations, but over time she gained mastery of them and used her abilities to fight crime. However, the curse came with a side effect. Every time Amanda transforms, her cells would overwrite themselves, and in the process of repairing, she would appear to become younger. Over time, this de-aging process appeared to turn Amanda into a prepubescent girl. The younger Amanda got, the bigger her monster form became. However, in reality, Amanda was actually 29. Anyway, back in the main series continuity, Amanda's first mission was repelling a Flaxen invasion with the other Guardians of the Globe members. Little did Amanda know that she would spend far more time with the Flaxen species in her life than she ever would with Earthlings, but we'll get to that in a minute. The Flaxens are from another dimension, and had attempted to invade before, however during their first invasion they learned that time works differently here and they rapidly age when exposed to our dimension. The second invasion of the Flaxens was ended when Robot determined that the bracelets the Flaxens were wearing were helping them resist de-aging in our dimension. Destroying the bracelets causes them to age and they are again repelled. Robot and Amanda quickly butt heads, with Amanda making sexual remarks to fellow teammate Rexplode, who despite their battle she finds very attractive and grows to have a crush on. Robot and Amanda discuss her affliction, and Robot dedicates himself to finding a cure for her condition. This early discussion between the two of them also prompts Robot to find a cure for his own lifelong ailment. Robot's condition and his subsequent cure is discussed at length in his own video, so check that out. Robot over time starts to become fairly obsessed with Amanda, and starts to manipulate the events around them so that they become allies, friends, and later in the series, lovers. 
And I know what you're thinking, we just had another like weird young girl with a robot, are they banging kind of scenario in WandaVision, and this is way different. This is actually going to make sense. Invincible eventually decides to help a street-level thug named Titan take down a criminal kingpin named Machine Head. However, Machine Head is stocked to the brim with heavy-hitting henchmen, including the incredibly powerful Battle Beast, Magnatac, Kursk, Furnace, Magmaniac, and Tether Tyrant. Now, in the process of trying to help Titan, Mark gets the crap kicked out of him, and the Guardians of the Globe arrive and continue the assault. But in the comics, the battle ends when Bulletproof and Black Samson are beaten badly by the Battle Beast and put into comas. The remainder of the team takes Machine Head prisoner, and it's shown that Titan orchestrated the whole thing in order to gain control of the criminal underworld. Considering Black Samson got his brains beat in, his super suit is not being used by anybody, so Robot retrofits it so that Amanda can use the suit for a period of time. Using the power suit would make it so that she didn't need to transform, and if Amanda doesn't need to transform, she doesn't de-age, and if she doesn't de-age, that gives Robot more time to research her condition. Except Amanda is gonna Amanda, and in the very first battle using the super suit, she transforms into her monster form, destroying it after she's baited into a confrontation with Omnipotus. We next learn that Robot is actually a genius named Rudolf Connors, who has been confined to a special tank his entire life and that he's working on a solution to this. Robot employs the Mahler twins and begins the process of cloning himself a new body using DNA he harvested from Rex Splode. Robot picks Rex's DNA because he notices that Amanda is attracted to him. Gross. Robot also genetically engineers the age of his clone to be about the same age as Amanda as well. Rudolph introduces himself to the team in his new human form, much to everybody's shock, including Rex Splode. Amanda is initially creeped out, and rightfully so, but Robot explains to her that it was her condition that actually led to him finally dedicating himself to finding a way out of his own tank and freeing himself from his condition. Robot and Amanda, however, do quickly become friends, and that friendship grows in the coming months, turning into a relationship. After repelling the second attack of the dreaded Doc Seismic, Robot and Monster Girl go to a movie and they bond when they collectively, and rightfully, get mistaken for children. They also have to swindle their way into getting tickets by tricking the doorman. When the first Sequid invasion of Earth begins, Monster Girl is part of the team that boards the approaching Martian spaceship and attempts to stop it. The Sequids are a hive mind being that requires a host to form an incredibly powerful collective consciousness. With even one host, the Sequids have the power to take down entire planets, and they find that host in a missing human explorer that was left on Mars earlier in the series named Russ Livingston. The team is able to defeat the Sequids using technology created on the fly-by robot, although unbeknownst to the team, one of the Sequids remains inside of Russ and continues to be attached to him after the event. Robot's next attempt at halting Amanda's progressive degenerative disorder is to make a drone for Amanda to pilot that resembles her monster form, but unfortunately Amanda is unable to pilot it effectively. In the next few issues, after another attack from Doc Seismic, the dynamics of the book change again, with Invincible learning that Cecil Stedman and the Global Defense Agency have been using one-time threats like Darkwing and D.A. Sinclair's Reanimin to aid the government. This leads to a falling out, and the majority of the Guardians of the Globe quit and form a new team operating out of the old Teen Team base. The next significant action for Monster Girl comes when Robot develops a belt for her that takes an exact replica of her DNA the second she transforms. This belt then assists Monster Girl in reforming her DNA the exact way it was before she transformed, causing her to no longer de-age when she transforms. This effectively cures Amanda's condition long term and she continues to wear the belt throughout the rest of the series. The next event to incur is the Invincible War, and the villain Angstrom Levy brings a number of alternate dimension versions of Mark Grayson to Earth in order to attack and kill the Invincible we all know and love and the one that I've barely mentioned at all in this video. Amanda is part of the force that helps repel the alternate dimension Mark Grayson's, and she's seriously injured in this fight. In fact, she's about to be killed by an alternate version of Invincible before Rex Splode charges his skeleton, turning himself into a massive suicide bomb that kills the alternate version of Mark. 
Angstrom and the alternate Marks are ultimately defeated, but Rex's sacrifice deeply affects both Monster Girl and Robot. In fact, Robot changes his name to Rex in order to honor him. A little later, the third and final Sequid invasion takes place, and Monster Girl is part of the team that battles the Sequids and helps clear the area of civilians, but she really doesn't have a major role to play here, it's just a pretty big battle that I figured I should mention. But now we are going to get into the crazy stuff. In the very next issue after the Sequid invasion, the Flaxons invade again. However, this time, Robot and Amanda decide to travel through one of the portals to the Flaxons' dimension in order to take the fight to them in their own home turf. Little did they know that it would be a very, very long time before they ever see Earth again. And I know what you're thinking. I know YouTubers are lazy, but is this guy really about to reuse his footage from his robot video in order to cover this entire arc? And the answer is of course yes, because I already wrote, did the voiceover work, and edited it, and it's fantastic. But if you want to skip this part because you've already saw it in my robot video, then feel free to skip ahead to the timestamp on the screen. Rex and Monster Girl end up in captivity in the Flexen Dimension. Over the span of nearly four years, Rex and Monster Girl are held prisoner. During this time, Rex learns the Flaxen language, and Monster Girl is used as a beast for gladiatorial sport. They also determine that they basically don't age in that dimension, as the reverse of what happens to the Flaxens in our dimension happens to them in the Flaxen Dimension. Rex and Monster Girl are held in captivity for almost 20 years, with Rex devising a plan to overthrow the Flaxen monarchy. However, the first attempt fails, and they are punished again, this time ordered to rebuild the capital cities that were destroyed by Omni-Man generations ago. Almost a hundred years after entering the Flaxen dimension, Robot and Monster Girl start a violent rebellion comprised of slave workers and they revolt against the Flaxen royal family of Zaxel, and Rex becomes their leader. Rex and Monster Girl fight in a nearly 200 year long war known as the Great War of Independence. During this time, Rex makes alliances with other Flaxens and eventually the tide turns in the war. Monster Girl secretly desires to go home, but is unable because Rex believes that if they do leave the planet, then eventually the Flaxons will just undo all they've accomplished and come back to attack Earth again. Eventually, Rex's forces win, and the duo decides to stay in the Flaxon dimension and rule permanently. Rex becomes the Emperor, and Monster Girl his queen. They rebuild the Flaxon society and usher in a new utopia for the dimension. Despite the war, Monster Girl is able to convince Rex to let the Zaxel family go free. Robot and Monster Girl become estranged when Robot becomes obsessed with his leadership position. It also doesn't help that Monster Girl also assists Zaxel people who she believes Robot was treating unfairly post-war. The two barely speak for decades until they eventually reunite. However, the Zaxels again attack this time aided by Monster Girl, and Robot is imprisoned again in the same cell that he was imprisoned in about 150 years before. When Monster Girl learns that the Zaxel family plans to attack Earth again, she helps release Robot and apologizes for turning on him in the first place. The two again reconcile, retake their throne of power, and end the rebellion. However, shortly thereafter, Monster Girl comes clean with Rex about having an affair, and the act breaks Rex's heart. He decides it's time to return to Earth, and the two make plans to go to Earth's dimension. But before they leave, Rex gives the final order to kill every Zaxel and Zaxel supporter, effectively ending that threat once and for all. When the two return to Earth, they lie about how long they've been gone. They tell Cecil it's been about 12 years, when in reality it was almost a thousand. The pair return from the Flaxen dimension estranged. Rex and Amanda's world does come caving in though when the Flaxens invade again. This is fairly shocking because after all the work that they did in the Flaxen dimension for thousands of years, Robot and Amanda cannot believe that the Flaxens are invading Earth again. This time, the Flaxens are led by a new champion, Monax. It's revealed that Monax is the offspring of Amanda's affair, and that while she was in her male monster form, impregnated a female Zaxel. Despite Monax's invasion attempt, he is ultimately defeated and imprisoned by Robot. Amanda attempts to discuss what happened with Monax, now held in captivity, 
but he tells her that Rex's last act was to attempt to have all Zaxel and Zaxel supporters killed, including him as a child, something that he used to rally others to his cause over his lifetime. A bit later in the series, the dynamic changes again, and Robot begins his process of conquering and in his mind, perfecting the planet. Robot is able to strand Mark Grayson in another dimension, and while Mark is gone, Robot continues his planning phase. However, when Mark returns from the alternate dimension, this forces Robot's hand and he kills Cecil Stedman and launches a full-scale attack on Mark and many other heroes and villains. Monster Girl is disgusted by Robot's plans and is shocked to learn that he'd begun the invasion here on Earth similar to what he had done in the Flaxen dimension. Robot attacks Monster Girl and jettisons her body into space, where she's believed to die, but she's actually retrieved by a Viltramite named Anissa and brought back to Earth and safety. Robot ends up striking a deal with the Veltramites and the remaining heroes on Earth. He imprisons Monster Girl and begins to rule the planet creating a sort of utopia, but Mark does leave the planet being insanely outmatched. Robot continues to rule the planet for over five years while Mark is out in space going through a weird time travel arc that I do not want to discuss, but if you want to learn about that, feel free to watch his video. A number of remaining heroes on Earth who have been imprisoned by Robot are freed by D.A. Sinclair and his army of Reanimen. Included among them are Monster Girl, Monax, and Brit. However, their freedom is short-lived as Rex tracks them down and offers them a truce. Most of the heroes accept. Amanda is not one of them, but Rex states that he will offer the same pardon to the others if they agree to stop attacking his forces. Following the final climactic battle with Grand Regent Thrag, Mark combines forces with the Viltramites under his command and the remaining heroes of Earth and returns to take down Robot once and for all. In a single issue titled Robot War, the heroes, including Monster Girl, are able to defeat Robot once and for all. During the battle, Robot's new and improved drones nearly win before Amanda is able to determine which one Rex is actually piloting. When she tells Invincible, he grabs that specific drone and flies it deep into space where it can't communicate with the rest of his army. At that point, the battle is basically over. Invincible captures Robot and puts his brain into a suspension fluid, and from there, they can still use Robot as an advisor, but he cannot cause any more harm. The last time we see Monster Girl in the series is in the final issue, way in the future. She continues working as a crime fighter and helps aid Mark's son, Marky, as the new Invincible. The series ends, and for the most part, I'd like to think that Amanda ended up having a semi-happy ending once she was free of Robot. And that is about it for the comic book history of Monster Girl. And if you enjoyed this video and you learned a lot, consider doing all the random crap that YouTubers ask you to do. Like the video, comment below, subscribe, whatever, all that stuff. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. This has been Nick with Key Issues, and remember the motto, Monster Girl over everything.